since we have the horror. Uh, I don't live in that neighborhood either. But they always have the horror. Yeah, okay. Should we should get to what? Uh, Why don't you have a motion to make you vote? You get it? Oh, you live in that neighborhood. I've seen, I've seen. So we're calling the meeting to order. Right. A little past 12 at 1 30. And so the next on the agenda, we have the uh, motion by Councillor Helps and Councillor Halton. Would you like to start with Councillor Halton? Uh, um, yeah, I'll move the motion and speak to it. Um, mm -hmm. This uh, it was originally going to be in closed session because I originally thought of it as a personnel item, but then I realized, um, and I'm glad that Councillor Young brought it forward to move into open session, that it's actually a council policy item. So when I first read uh, the speechless period where this comes from, from the Focus magazine about this $34 million size, and I was like, how could we not have had this information? But then I realized, well, we could never have had this information because we haven't, as a council, at least since I've been here, given their direction to the staff to say, this is how we'd like to receive information about third-party reports. So this, in my mind, is um, it meant to just be a very clear request to staff from council as a whole through a motion to say that when third-party reports are received, um, they be forwarded to council in confidence and for information only. Uh, we recognize, uh, as the whereas clauses state, or I recognize as the whereas clauses state, that council staff works very hard and um, a lot of the analysis that needs to be done takes time. So it's not a question of that or rushing things, but I think it's just important for us to have information in our heads while it's being analyzed. Um, it's, there might be some amendment to the 30 days, maybe that's too quick. Um, so I'll leave that to council, but that's the spirit of my motion, and I hope that we can um, support it and give the direction to staff. Councillor Olka, did you want to add to that? Sure. Of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, echoing um, uh, Lisa's comments, I wanted to start by saying that for me this has absolutely nothing to do with um, a lack of trust in staff. Uh, I have extraordinarily high level of trust in, in our staff and our advice. I know that they're experts in many fields, certainly far more than I, and uh, I certainly rely on them at every turn. So I want to make that really clear from the beginning. Uh, for me, this is uh, a slightly larger, comes from a slightly larger issue uh, than Councillor Hall started from, and then it's more for me around the larger process of reinforcing or a regularization, I guess, what is a routine uh, process of information sharing. <clears throat> and I think, to a certain extent, I almost align this with taking another step in the whole open data open government process, which we're gradually moving along in a very positive way. <clears throat> the public, I think, has an expectation that uh, as we sit at this council table and take a position of leadership, that we will make good decisions based on good information. And I think some kind of a regularization of a process like this uh, will actually uh, help that uh, reality become even more true and will both give the public a better sense of confidence not only in us as individual leaders but in the larger process of governance as a whole. And in fact, will shift some of the responsibility for making informed decisions to us because it will be up to us if we've moved down this path, to in fact take the time and make the conscious decision to actually inform ourselves with the materials provided. And if we choose not to do so, then it is then our responsibility to bear the brunt of whatever outcomes might be precipitated from them. So I want to stress that uh, the goal behind this is simply an expansion of information sharing in a way which becomes routine. I do recognize uh, also, though, that there are perhaps um, unanticipated costs around moving in this direction. I don't know what those are. I would love to hear from staff what those might be. If, as Councillor Helps says, there needs to be uh, an alteration in the terms of this, if the execution of this, as it's presented, is in fact uh, onerous or adds a burden that is unreasonable to the staff's already heavy workload, I'm quite prepared to hear advice on making changes, both to the terms as well uh, as the model for implementing this type of thing. For me, this is around how do you achieve a better goal? And the goal here for me is to allow individual councillors and the council as a whole, as a group, as we act as a group, which I think for myself, I sometimes forget, 
in order for counsel as a whole to make a good decision that is both reasonable, defensible, and based in common sense, it needs to have the most information it can get. And that is the goal that I have behind co-sponsoring this resolution. And if there is advice from staff on a better way to achieve that goal, I would be delighted to hear it, because I can. I'm happy to provide advice. Thank you. Thank you. Your Worship. No, I completely understand sort of the thoughts behind this. I thought it might be just important to talk a little bit about the administrative process that goes behind a lot of this. It may not always be aware. You may not always be aware. Back in, I think, about 2007, the administration began the task of trying to identify the infrastructure deficit for the city. And at that time, it was determined to be around 500 million. And that includes everything. That includes sites. That includes building code changes, program changes, growth in the city, et cetera. And it was just that an estimate. And through various risk analysis, it was determined that it was really important that the city get more solid evidence and information about all of its buildings. And as you know, we have about $1.7 million worth of city buildings, 70 city buildings in the city. We're 150 years old. So as you can imagine, the deficit is quite large. So in each case, it may be a multitude of different external advice that comes to the city that helps the administration formulate policy with which we provide to council. So getting one report at a time may not give you all of the information you need to make good, sound judgment. I can give you an example for the seismic. Seismic is only one condition in making decisions around priorities. Once you get into seismic, you get into building codes. You need to look at programming. You need to look at the priorities and where council is going. So what we try to do is to pull all of the various pieces together so that when we provide you advice, you have external expertise behind that advice, and you have us pulling all of the various pieces together in one policy piece. And that's what we're, that's what, that's sort of what the process has been. When all of that is pulled together, the information comes to me at that point. And I try to ask all the hard questions in anticipation of a council meeting so that we have the information that you may need to be able to answer the question. So that's sort of the role I play. When all of the pieces are together and we're ready to provide advice to you to formulate some potential policy changes, I've done some of the due diligence as well. And so that's clearly how we work. Some of these projects are very long-term. And I'll give you an example. When they were looking at the underground pipes and taking camera pictures of it, it took us five years. Because you can imagine how much pipe we have and you can imagine how old it is. So sometimes the length of time is long. One thing I do know is that we are leaders on this island in terms of the work we've done around asset management. And each of these pieces is one aspect of the larger asset management plan that we want to bring forward to you. And so we're slowly chopping off bits. So I guess I certainly agree with the spirit of what you're trying to achieve here. I wonder if we could have a little bit of time to look at the time frames around this. Because as you know, at any point in time, we could have many reports in all kinds of areas on the go. I can give you an example. Our city solicitor has an external student doing some work to provide advice on numerous cases. That would be very difficult for somebody to coordinate all of those various aspects. So I wouldn't mind just having the opportunity to refer this to the administration, come back with the report very quickly, look at the timelines, and sort of turn around for different types of reports and get back to council. I certainly agree with the spirit of what council is trying to achieve here. Charlie, did you have a speaker's list going in? Okay. Okay. And Mr. Hoffman, you're up. Thank you. 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 Th
and as in with including the 30 day thing or oh, okay as, okay great thank you um, I have Councillor Gudgeon uh, as a list then young uh, I agree with the spirit of it but my my concern and I think it might take into consideration what the city manager has said perhaps it's complicated and I, I'm worried that if I get one piece of information that doesn't have the other four or five pieces and without somebody bringing it together which we essentially as a council have hired our city manager to do like I, I think we're wading in where I don't think I'm certainly didn't get elect, get elected because I'm an engineering specialist or a seismic upgrade specialist or I mean, th these are all far beyond my capability. I look to it as our city manager is our main employee and to make um, the decisions we have to let her bring them to us. Um, so I, I, I'm torn. I, I look to it as, as, as where council sits and I'm, I'm quite frankly dis disturbed that we might get one piece of a very complicated puzzle and start to wade in. Uh, I appreciate what Councillor Helps said about we need to gain the knowledge in a sense, but I didn't think I'm going to come out of my term at office and be an expert in engineering and be an expert. I have to count on the staff, and this, especially given the salaries that we pay, to, to, to give us the, the, the fulsome information and provide it with us, perhaps giving it to us a little bit earlier so I'm able personally to digest it a little bit more, uh, perhaps more professionally than I have up to this point. So I'm, I'm, I'd like to hear from others, thanks. Thank you. Now, um, uh, Ms. Stevens, I'm wondering if you could also, uh, as we start to have a speaking list, but it is, is, is an awareness of um, how priorities and emergent, emergency issues come through. I mean, I'm aware when I first looked at this that I just got a letter, uh, information the other day that, you know, that the city retained a geotechnical engineer in 2009 to undertake a pavement and subgrade investigation on Bay Street between Blanchard Street and Richmond Road. You know what I mean? Like, we never saw that. We never got it. It informed some of the staff's decision making. But so it's about trying to figure out at what level we dig into and when. And, and part of the issue, I guess, is, is an understanding for us of how do issues become emergent issues become emergencies like how, how what filter that has because I think that's part of uh, perhaps the spirit of this I think um, it, there's a, a variety of layers but what I think happens is um, we will do some risk assessments on city properties for example and those initial studies may point out some areas that we have some concerns about so that we will dig further into those and and I can give you the um, the um, fire hall as an example. We had some concerns uh, about it from a, a programming point of view. The new equipment was bigger than the opening, etc. So because that was emerging as an issue, staff then brought in more expertise to do a thorough examination of the existing facility and look at it from a variety of perspectives. They did the seismic work on it to show that what would happen in, a, in an earthquake. Um, they did a public safety examination of it. They also did a, a building code examination of it. And then they followed by programming. What do we need today and what might we need in the future? And that formed a report that we brought to council. It came from not being in the capital budget to being recommended to being in the capital be budget because of those issues. But the same could be said for the Johnson Street Bridge. We um, hired someone to do a condition assessment of the bridge because there were some, some, some concerns about, first of all, the age, the, you know, the uh, seismic, etc. That study uh, recommended that there was uh, a, a limited life left in the bridge without uh, making some decisions about rehab or, or replacement. That was brought forward to council. It had not been on the priority list. So these professional engineers, when they see something that involves life safety, et cetera, they, like, they will bring things forward and those, those usurp anything else that's on the list. What we're trying to do, though, in the bigger picture and in the long term 
is to, um, through some of the work we're doing around seismic, around um, building code, around um, you know what would happen in a major emergency, what are those facilities we would need to house people, etc. We're trying to develop policy for you to consider that would help us prioritize in our asset management plan. Because as we all know, we do not have enough money uh, to, to address the issues facing the city, like all, every other city in Canada. We are not alone in this. And so what we're trying to do is help with expert advice on how you might prioritize in the long term as money comes available from other levels of government, as infrastructure money comes, what would those things, what would those values be that would help prioritize those projects? And it's a big undertaking. Um, you know, when we talk about the 70 buildings, that doesn't include a lot of the other public spaces we have, the parks. You know, as we speak, we have a number of reports on go. We've got a stormwater master plan that's in progress. We've got a water system master plan. We've got a building condition assessment. You know, we've got a, ma a parks master plan that's in, you know, it, it's a, bu a bicycle. We've done the bicycle master plan. There's a bunch of pieces. The, the, the overriding um, umbrella of all this is Council's asset management plan that we are working really hard to complete. And so that's how all of it sort of fits together in sort of a grand scheme. Thank you, Councillor Young. Helps Thornton Joe. Uh, I'm I'm supportive of this motion. Um, I'm the one aspect of it that I'm not convinced of is the is the idea that council has. Um, possession of information for 30 days that the public doesn't have. Um, that to me is an odd kind of situation. I, I can understand council having information for the period of time between an agenda being distributed and to the council members and uh, 24 or 48 hours before it's distributed to the press um, so the council members can read it and not be totally mystified when somebody calls them and asks them a question. Um, but um, my view is very strongly that um, uh, more information should be distributed to Council as it comes in. Of course, these are complex decisions. Of course, for deciding, making decisions about buildings, we need to know things about life safety and heritage and a whole lot of things. Um, we're never going to have all of that information uh, because until the public hears about it, we don't have one important element, which is public input. Is the public interested in saving the garbly road <laughs> plumbing supplies storage building, which was built in 1879? We, we don't know. And we, 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 can't, we can't assemble all of that information f over a co the course of three or four or five years, and finally the, all of the information is all together, and then it comes to us, some of it four or five years out of date, but all together, and then we hear from the public. That's not how it works. You get information as it's available. It's imperfect. You ask the questions that you need to to get the information that you need to fill in the blanks. Uh, so I get the report on the buildings. What I'm interested in is um, you know, the life safety of the occupants. That's, that happens to be more important to me than even the heritage aspect or the economic aspect. So, so that's where I want the staff to put their effort on the next go around. But uh, the, when you hold back information on one element, which is all the other buildings and the fire hall building, we are in the position of acting with imperfect information when we have to make a decision on the bridge because those are interrelated information. We've gotten the information on the bridge. We don't have the information on the other stuff because that's still being held back. So we can't, we can't make um, appropriate decisions. One of the, and I understand that um, a lot of these are detailed reports and may 
um, may not be ready for a council decision. One of the tools that we can use um, to sort of winnow this down a little bit, in some cases maybe to have reports come to the subcommittees. The purpose of the, whatever it is, the Environment and Infrastructure Subcommittee um, might be to look at the report on sewer conditions or something. And maybe it doesn't need to come to council, maybe there's no council decision, but maybe it becomes a public report, it looks, it's looked at, at by that committee. What happens now is typically reports only come to those subcommittees, and I'm speaking of the one I know about, uh, when they're pretty much ready to come to council anyway, and often there isn't a lot of, it's the report is, that comes to the com subcommittee is the same one that goes to council. So it doesn't uh, get a lot of further value added, if you like, and maybe the, maybe those subcommittees should be digging in a little deeper on some of the very detailed reports about the schedule for sewer replacements and so forth. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I'm, um, I'm very concerned that um, the, the, whole, the whole way we make decisions is supposed to be, um, supposed to be public at the, um, at the city council level, with, with small exceptions. We're not a cabinet form of government. We're supposed to be making decisions in an open kind of way. And that means that sometimes imperfect and incomplete information gets brought forward and uh, kicked around and chewed over and more questions asked uh, before the council is ready to make a decision about which building are we going to put our money in, and which ones are we going to let, are we going to demolish, or whatever it is decision that we're going to make. Uh, but th that's just how we do the decisions, and it, it's not a process of carefully developing all of the options and then finally coming forward with the answer, which we all get behind. That's, that's not how we, we operate and we shouldn't pretend we do. And I, I think to, to make it work the way it should, I think, I think this stuff um, has to come forward um, early in the process and even, even an imper in an imperfect form. So I am, am generally supportive of the thrust of this. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Stevens, you wanted to um, respond? Through Your Worship, I, I just want to um, reiterate, I don't think there's ever been a time where uh, administration are holding back. Uh, that's not the intention. I think the uh, where a, a council decision has been required, the report has come through with, with the information that's been required with it. Um, there has never been a a council motion to my uh, recollection that says any and every report that has been done should go to council. Thank you. Uh, unless there has been a decision that's required by council. Thank you. I have helped Thornton, Joe, and then Isaac. Thanks. And I recognize that this is a hard discussion to have, potentially, and I'm glad that we're having it. So I just, a, a few more thoughts um, that I've have come to me from listening to my colleagues and to the city manager. So first thing is, and to kind of pick up and clarify something that I think I heard Councillor Young say, this isn't, uh, the, the spirit of this motion isn't necessarily to ask, to ask for each report to formally come to the GPC or council table to be debated amongst council. I'm imagining something like we get it by email or it goes into our mailboxes. Um, secondly, when Councillor Alto and I uh, work through this together, we wondered if there might be some threshold, you know, uh, reports with regard to city assets or reports that are, you know, one $1 million dollars and more in value. We couldn't figure out what the threshold was, so we brought it to this table as is. Um, some one reason that I urge us to move forward in this direction and to do it sooner rather than later, i.e. today, if we can come to something that's going to be satisfactory to the majority of this table, um, is for a number of reasons. And to pick up on something that the city manager said, I, I agree with Councillor Gudgeon and Councillor Alto and the city manager, we need advice from our staff. Um, but for me, the spirit of this motion isn't about advice, it's about information. And I think that that's, there's a significant difference there. 
Um, and again, um, even though I'm an academic, I come at things from a really concrete perspective, and that's why I started off with the seismic upgrade $34 million report, um, because for me, policy change needs to come from practice. And so while it, at the time that I've sat at this table, it's true that we have information to make decisions for the most part. But the concern that I have is when a member of the media contacts me and says, hey, did you see this report? Look, there's $34 million potential worth of construction, seismic construction that needs to be done. Uh, and I say no, and you know, whatever, that's fine. That's not my main concern. My main concern is that for two years, we did actually make decisions without having all the information, and that's on the capital budget. And there are, and I, I know I referred to it in an email, but on page 12 of the capital budget presentation, there are a list of unfunded capital projects. And there are a significant number of them, four, that have no estimate beside them. So, so I feel like I made a decision to reduce the property tax increase from 1.5 to 1.25 for capital projects without having this $34 million piece of information. And had I had that information, I would have made a different decision. And I know we don't have concrete estimates. I know it was just preliminary. But having had those things listed as unfunded capital projects, that I actually feel like I was missing information when I decided on this year's capital budget. So that's where the spirit of this comes from. So maybe there's a threshold that we need significant reports or something. But I feel like we, like Councillor Young says, we need information to make good decisions because we're accountable to the public. And when the public says, hey, well, didn't you have that information to make that decision? All I can say is no. And so that's the spirit of this motion, just to try and, to try and fix that. Thank you. Ms. Stevens? Through your worship, um, the, the number of $34 million is, is part of the estimate of the $500 million deficit. So you would never um, budget for seismic alone because when you do seismic, you also have to bring the building up to building code. So you would never put in the budget $34 million. You'd include in each of the capital projects what you think would be the seismic um, amounts to it, plus you would put in there what you think the um, building code upgrades would be, and, and, and they're all estimates until you actually do the detailed. Sorry, a follow-up though, but what I'm getting at is that if, that if those buildings that are listed in that report had been listed on unfunded capital projects, which aren't part of the budget, with those 17 buildings, or however many there are, I forget, with no estimate, that would have given me a different picture to say, wow, it's not just that we have all these things to do that we're budgeting for, we have all of these things that don't have an estimate attached yet, things like community centres, public works yard, that I'm going to think about differently. If this, if this list were two pages long rather than one, that would have made a difference. I, I guess I could. Uh, um, what the city manager is saying is, uh, we have, we don't. Even those 34 million aren't on there. Neither is the other 500 million that's on there of deficits, of of sewers, of waters, of the Dallas Road balustrade, all those sort of things. They're working their way through the system. So, and perhaps we can ask that. I mean, it's one of the things, you know, of that 1.5 billion dollars of deficit. Um, What's on that list? Give me the whole complete list, right? You know, sort of stuff. Uh, through and your worship, in 2007, and I might actually get the engineers to come, I wasn't here in 2007, I think there was uh, a real attempt to look at how big the infrastructure deficit problem was, considering all of the city's assets, seismic, um, getting uh, old buildings up to code, etc. And that number, all inclusive, is, is approximately 500, a half a billion dollars. Those amounts have never appeared, uh, those amounts have been put forward to council, I think, every year since then. Um, has there ever been capacity in the capital budget to include them? No. Um, I think unless other levels of government uh, assist uh, municipal governments, uh, we'll never get to the point in being able, being able to fund half a billion dollars in, in, in uh, deficit. Um, and there's 70 buildings, those are only 17. I do know my interest, I think we've, both you and I have talked about is, is an awareness of what are those projects, what are out there, what are the ones we're going to fix, what are the ones we're only going to fix with senior levels of government funding, and which ones we're we not going to do. And, and our, my goal, is, as we said, is to, to get to an awareness of, of that stuff. Charlene Thornton, Joe, uh, then Ben Isaac, then Marianne Altar. <coughs> thank you, and uh, thank you for bringing this motion forward. I, I appreciate the spirit of the motion, and I think we all want to receive things, uh, information in a timely manner and be as informed as we can uh, to be able to make the best decisions. 
there's also the saying that sometimes a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, and especially when you don't have all the pieces t together. Uh, so I can understand the concerns that uh, I have or the staff may have, and that I've been at the table long enough that sometimes one little piece of information becomes such a reaction uh, from the public without, uh, you know, and we spend our time dealing with that reaction when there are other pieces that the, the public and as well as council need to know uh, to understand the full implication of, of the information we're getting. So I, I am interested in uh, the city manager getting together with the directors and, and having that discussion and, and bringing back something to do with uh, thresholds, whether it's a dollar figure, whether, you know, I don't want to have every single report that goes by every single department. Uh, but there are some times when, you know, um, whether I need a refresher uh, discussion that was had three years ago about um, about an item. I remember one of the things that I remember clearly was when we brought up the bridge. Um, there was a lot of people that said, you know, we campaigned, no one mentioned the bridge, and all of a sudden the bridge was there. And it was uh, Councillor Madoff that brought the newspaper article that said, you know, we actually did. It was, you know, just a list of things that uh, staff had said or some things are gonna to have to be considered in the near future. And at the time they were doing the seismic or all the information and hadn't brought it forward to us, but it was already sort of uh, highlighted that this is gonna be a discussion we'll be having probably in the next council. So, you know, I think it's good that we are kept informed of what may be coming down the pipe because, you know, I, I don't like to ha have a call as well as any other colleague of mine saying that, did you know this? and and they have a report that I may not have seen. So I'd be interested in the staff coming forward and saying how can we at least get a heads up that this, you know, this report's in, this is what it's saying, uh, but these are the other pieces that still need to be added. And I agree, you know, I, I know that we have tons that have to be done for infrastructure deficit. Uh, do I know exactly every single point? Uh, and, and of course, as one goes off, another one gets added constantly. Um, but maybe it's a, a certain amount, whether it's a top whatever dollar to this amount or the top 20 or something. Uh, maybe it can just help with our decision making at budget time and if we have that in context. So I appreciate the spirit of the motion, um, but I would want more information from uh, the city manager and staff and how best we achieve the goals that we need to achieve and as well as understanding that the reality that they have to deal with every day with every report that's out there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Isaac, then Councillor Alto. Yeah, I f uh, support the motion that's on the floor. I think um, that knowledge is important and that um, there's obviously responsibilities that come with information, but I don't think ignorance is something that Council should be satisfied with. That I, On my Facebook page a few weeks ago, there was something about a someone putting their head in the sand and it actually both takes work whether to put your head in the sand or open your eyes and they both have obligations and they both have negative consequences and benefits. Um, I think it, it would take self-restraint so it would mean that council doesn't just have to jump down the jump on the head of whatever uh, department uh, director has received a report it just means receiving the information reflecting not insisting that it shows up on the work order or that a decision point has arrived but just being aware that as the stewards of the tax dollars that paid for the report and as the stewards of the city's interests and as uh, the public's represent representatives in uh, civic government that we want to know what what's happening in a broad sense what information is staff receiving what information is coming down the pipe that will ultimately inform our decision making I think the problem with a monetary cap is there could be a report that's commissioned for a fairly modest sum that has fairly substantial information that could have a big bearing on decision making and so it's and I think even in terms of uh, simply asking for information to be forwarded it's the most effective in terms of deploying staff time because it can be as simple as hitting forward in the inbox it doesn't require digestion or distillation or explanation. Department heads or Gail would be free to provide context if they wanted, but it could be as simple as, here's the report on uh, tax rates just received from Mr. So-and-so, full stop. And they might add, in, oh, by the way, in November, a decision point will be coming with this additional information, period. And then we all exercise restraint receive the information, read it. If there's follow-up queries, ask it, but realize that there is a logical work plan that staff are adhering to, and this is just a part of that. So 
Um, but I think it's an important step for council to, to take um, in light of a number of issues that have arisen, as well as the expectations of the public. Uh, Alto Fortin Gudgeon. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, I obviously support the, mosage, ma the motion of uh, being a co-sponsor, but um, it's been really interesting for me to listen to all of my colleagues' uh, comments on this. I think, generally speaking, that everyone is very supportive of the goal uh, and what we want to accomplish. I think it's a good goal, and I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I've also been very interested to hear uh, the city manager's uh, comments, not just on the existing process, but um, on uh, her analysis of where this could go and, and the pros and cons and whatnot. The fact that all of that has been very informative for me uh, also makes me wonder what the senior staff think. And since it, you know, for a variety of reasons, this came forward just a few days ago, I'm not uh, unhappy about the notion of leaving this with staff for a couple of weeks uh, and getting that kind of feedback. If, in fact, as I said at the outset, that uh, you know one of the things we rely on our uh, staff to do is to provide us with expert advice, to a certain extent, this is no different. Uh, this is about process more than it is about a substantive issue that requires engineering or whatnot. Uh, but I still think that there is good advice to be had on process as well. Um, I, that doesn't, for me, take away from the goal that we're achieving, which is much bigger in my head, as I said at the outset, than any particular report or any particular issue or any whether it's infrastructure or whatever. For me, this is about good process that leads to good information, that leads to good governance. And so it doesn't matter what examples we use, the outcome for me is about doing all that better. If that outcome can be better achieved by also asking for advice from our expert staff, that's great. And so I'm, I'm still committed to the goals of this. Uh, I'm not certain, just kind of as this morning, we struggled with trying to amend the details of the lawn bowling contract. <laughs> I don't know whether or not, as, as Lisa said earlier, you know, we struggled with should there be a financial cap, should there be an issue cap, should it be just for infrastructure, should it be for whatever. You know, we were kind of shooting in the dark on that because all of those would work, but maybe some of them have outcomes which we're not aware of. So I, I actually think it would be useful to have uh, the comments of staff perhaps uh, over the next couple of weeks. I don't want to see this delayed a long time. I think it is important, as everyone around the table has said, that the goal is constructive. Uh, the goal is based, I think, in a place of wanting to do governance better. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Woodland is thrilled with that comment and would like us to do that better this afternoon. Uh, but I, I do think that, that there would be value added to the eventual design of whatever this process might become by having the advice of staff in a very timely fashion. So I'm not sure if that requires a motion or if it's just a request of staff and that we put this back on the agenda in two weeks or how was the best process to do that but I think that would be my preferences to where we go from here as far as next steps. Thank you. Um, I was going to jump in and go, I mean part of what we're struggling with and I think staff is struggling with and what they're trying to develop is that whole concept of threshold. Uh, is it a financial element? Is it a public risk element? Is it a use element? Those are what, to a certain extent, staff are trying to provide us with policy and direction on. So um, there, there, I think we do need to practically say there is a certain level of something that says, um, you know, this doesn't go to the council at this moment, such as whether we want the full engineering report about the road base on on this and there, so so there's that issue of threshold that needs to be dealt with, and I think um, it is interesting, and it's not an easy one to, to go forward. Um, we do also have to have, as you say, and, and Councillor, um, uh, someone mentioned it, that that um, you know on reports that we, that we just get them. Um, I can think of some two interesting reports done by one person. Uh, the first one was, do not put lights on the Galloping Goose Trail on the uh, train trestle because lights encourage criminal activity. Um, and so that was the recommendation. The same person two weeks later said, make sure you light up the Gonzales pathway for extra amount of dollars because that helps deter. So to a certain extent, when you get third party reports, part of what we can need to benefit from is to have our professional staff actually evaluate their content. Um, and their value and how it informs. So, so I, I wouldn't have an expectation that any third party report can just be sent to us. Um, part of what we have to rely on is that staff are doing at least a little bit of, of taking a look. So, so that needs to be addressed uh, when, uh, of how they come forward in a timely way, but recognizing that staff, 
have a certain amount of reluctance to come forward with a green banana because the an idea that isn't ripe yet, something that isn't developed fully, because uh, my observation here is that too often, especially in a public forum, that they get heavily criticized for it. Um, they are taken to task for incomplete information uh, and that sort of issue. So it is one thing to say restraint, but the, the second thing is, is to recognize that um, it is difficult as a professional to bring something forward that you don't feel is complete, defensible, or you have any information. So we're going to have to deal with that, and that's as much as a that's a working together type of thing. Like there's a recognition on that. Um, we obviously have an idea, uh, an issue around FOIable. I think the there needs to be a larger recognition um, that the public wants to be uh, involved and engaged in, in the issues that affect them. That uh, social media is really driving a lot of that. There is a demand for way more information in a more timely way, uh, and and that is something we have. Uh, part of the tools that are out there for the public is the use of FOI. Um, part of, now I know that there's a, a special function that is separate from the city um, that's served by Mr. Woodland responding to FOI requests. But to a certain extent, um, really, uh, for, for council's benefit, recognizing that um, at any time a media person could stick a microphone or a camera in your eyes and go, what do you know about this? Um, that uh, the tendency is to go, deer in the headlights, I don't know. Um, and no one ever in our position want to say, I don't know. Um, so really, if there's some sort of addressment in, in that issue of when things are of issue of or I go out, we need to have that heads up because clearly it's something that's going to come in an issue brief. You don't wait for it to break and then scramble heads up on that. So those are some of the things I think that uh, I, I would uh, support. You know, having senior staff in a timely way uh, I'm not sure I'd tie it to two weeks. Um, part of our in-camera, out-camera, and all the things we're doing, uh, I'm not sure that staff can do that in that this time. That's part of the issue. Um, but um, that senior staff, city manager, come back and respond with some suggestions uh, to address some of these issues about uh, interest in greater information in a more timely way, what thresholds are there, how we deal with uh, third-party reports, um, and how do we deal with uh, the FOI sort of emerging issue stuff. Um, so um, that is that. So um, I have Gudgeon and then helps. Nothing's easy, hey? <laughs> um, there's a couple of things. I, I, I agree with the, listening to the colleague. I agree with the transparency, what everyone's asking for. It seems to me in the motion is a higher level of transpa perhaps transparency with council, not with the public, but with council. Having said that, if we were to do that, um, we'd also need to develop a code of conduct because I can, I can, knowing human nature being what it is, I can see how pieces could be taken from that without understanding uh, how important it is to, to not make it about, make it personal. I don't know. I just think a code of conduct would be critical. The, what concerns me, two things really concern me, is that we haven't set our priorities yet, and this looks like it has the potential of becoming a priority. And so I think this could be reserved for our discussion and our priority setting session. This appears to me that it will take, to do it properly, it's going to take time, and, it, and it's a, perhaps a good way to go. Uh, to do it one off again in here and not outside of our priority setting sessions which we still haven't completed and it's almost been a year uh, disturbs me a little bit and another reason why I'm so sitting on the fence is the information that staff often ask for in reports in my humble experience can often determine the result you know what I mean? You ask for certain reports, then basically staff is making the decisions by what reports get asked for. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed through our city manager um, at, in a more full, in a, in a better discussion. Because I know if, uh, if we need a new dishwasher at the restaurant, trust me, they'll, you know, or if they want a, a, a higher upgrade, they'll make it through reports to show how important it is that we get it. Is it necessary? Not necessarily. You know what I mean? It, it can be predetermined. So there needs to be a policy on, on which reports I think are asked for. Uh, and the other thing is that, my god, other cities have dealt with this, haven't they? <laughs> is there no examples out there of this can't be new to Victoria? 
I'm just wondering if, if, there, if it does go back to staff for further consideration and senior staff before the priority setting session that we look to some models of, I hope we're not starting from scratch. There's got to be models of, of governance and other urban centers that could help us address this, I'm thinking, maybe. Okay. Um, helps, I think, was next on the list. So I appreciate the discussion around the table. And again, I haven't been here for that long, but one of the things that I observe is that I don't know if it's a reluctance to make hard decisions, and I recognize it's hard to make hard decisions, and maybe this is an easy one for some people, maybe it's not, I don't know. But this refer to staff, and then it's going to be a giant process, and then it builds and builds and builds. I actually am quite compelled by what Councillor Isaac said. Report comes in forward, councillors at victoria.ca. This is for your information only, please hold in confidence, period. And you know, if, if they want to add an addendum, this will be coming before you sometime later in the fall, or this is part of a larger piece, one extra sentence. I don't want to blow this into a huge work project for staff. The, it's supposed to just be very simple. And maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think so. So I would, uh, I, I'd like to vote on this amendment today, if it, or this motion today, if it gets defeated, that's fine. And then someone can bring something else forward if, if people support the spirit, but not this motion. So uh, to be a little bit more flexible, uh, I'll change or amend the motion to within 60 days of receipt by the city to i don't give some more time but i'd like to see us vote on this and if it's defeated that's fine and maybe someone can bring something forward that captures the spirit but that isn't this motion but i see this as quite simple and not requiring a lot of staff resources or time or a big study alto uh, I, I really appreciate those comments, but I actually don't want to see this defeated. <laughs> uh, I'm quite happy, as I said at the outset, for it to be uh, altered in a way which makes it actually um, able to be executed and to achieve the goal that, I, again, I think everyone around the table really uh, wants to achieve. Um, but just as I think it's important that we've had this opportunity to have a discussion, I think it's important for the senior staff to be able to have the same discussion. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that needs to take a long time. I don't think that needs to be a huge process. Uh, I think it really needs to be kind of like a reflection of what we've had today. And, and for me, this is almost um, an aspect of governance that deals with relationship building. As this group of people around this table works together over time, uh, it works better as it develops some kind of a relationship. I'm, I presume that that exists within the senior staff and maybe what we're trying to achieve here today is a way forward in developing a relationship between this table and that table so that we're all working towards the same goals which is to provide the best service possible for the city as a whole and so I, I don't want to defeat this motion because I think it's a good motion that maybe with some tweaking would actually help us achieve something positive but I do believe that just as we've had this really excellent discussion today, that it would be appropriate to give the staff a chance to have the same discussion. So uh, I, would, I would prefer, I, personally, I would prefer to, to delay it by a short time, not a long time. I, don't, I do agree with other comments that have been said that this is un, it's unnecessary to make this into a big deal. It's unnecessary to have it as a huge project. That, that's true, it isn't. It, it's not a big project. But it, in my head, the, the goal of this was to create some process which made our work together better, based on better information sharing. This seemed like a great idea. I still think it's a great idea, and I still think it's workable. But I also think it's reasonable to allow the people with whom we're working at a senior level time to reflect on it and see if they can make it better. And if they can't, or they come back with something that we disagree with, that's still our prerogative to say, you know what? OK, great, love your ideas, but actually, no. We really want to do this. And that's, that's our right as elected people to do that. And so you know, I, I really appreciate all the comments around the table, and I, re and I particularly appreciate Councillor Help's notion of trying to move us forward, because I agree that we need to take decisions. And I think we do make hard decisions, and many more harder ones are ahead. So it's good practice. But I, but I also think that it's not unreasonable to allow our colleagues uh, in our collective of decision makers to have the same opportunity to think about this as we've had today. So my preference would be for us to delay it for a couple of weeks. 
I too would support getting information back from the senior staff as, as to what has been discussed here. I think that uh, it's sort of appropriate and respectful. Um, I, I don't come to the conclusion that this is easy, uh, that this is easily doable, uh, recognizing that, I mean, just for us as, as council, having another three or four major reports a day, because that's probably the number that, that we would get, uh, how is that going to benefit? Because then we start going, which one of these should I read, or did you read this? I mean, and then, then it's not in context, and we don't have in staff, I and mean, it's not. Staff is generally guide, guided by, and I think we've heard this, our priorities. So it isn't a case as, uh, of, how would I put it, count staff holding stuff back or doing stuff that, that we don't approve on. They are our staff. They take our direction. We're the governors. Um, they're working on priorities. Now, obviously, they continue to work on the priorities set by council, uh, the past council. Uh, until such time as this council has uh, had a chance to finish reviewing them and uh, and changing them or supporting them or that. But but all of that is speculatory until such time as, as we've done that. So they continue to work on those issues that, that are important and set by our priorities. Uh, I too uh, appreciate getting information in a timely way uh, and information that allows me to, to help make decisions or, or have an awareness. Uh, and this is appreciative. So, I think it would be respectful to, to say, yes, let's have senior staff and city manager review this motion and uh, report back to us um, as to some of the implications and recommendations, like how many reports are there and how much time is it and, and, and what are there some of the issues concerns. Uh, they obviously, you asked, has some other city done this? Um, let's recognize that we have some of the best staff um, in, uh, in Canada working for us and doing this sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, I'm sure there's been issues talked about, but this is the first time I've ever heard of a motion like this. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's ultimately an issue of how do we make sure that there's a, a good process around information flow in a timely way? That, that really is the question, I think. And let's hear back from council recognizing that, or uh, hear back from staff recognizing that there is a new era of, of more information being asked by the public. Uh, and, and part of our interest to, of openness and transparency. Uh, but also knowing what the dangers uh, that, that may be out there, so at least we're aware of those, so that we have the information in front of us to make a decision on this. I, I don't think it's a, uh, just, let's just ask for it all in 30 days, it's an easy one. Uh, I, I think it's more complicated than that. Um, so, um, Ben, and then come back to Marianne. Yeah. Um. I think this was a good idea when councillors Alto and Helps originally brought it forward. We've heard that at least councillors Young and myself support it, so if the sponsors um, want to move forward, there's a majority at this table to provide a recommendation to council. That wouldn't preclude additional information being prepared prior to a final decision, but I think it's important to take this step in the interests of open government. Um, so that's Thank my, you. my view. Councillor Thornton Joe. I just uh, don't know what in my comments uh, indicated that I wasn't in support of it. I am in support of it, but the process, the motion on the floor, I'm more supportive of giving the staff opportunity to come back and give some feedback and, and, and uh, consider what, so, so what Councillor Alto said. So I don't know whether there was any indication that I didn't support it. I thought I did. Basically hearing unequivocally, I felt that Councillors Young and myself made it clear that we were prepared to move forward without delay. They would like to move forward with the 30-day demand on information without feedback from senior staff. Okay, Councillor Alto. I'm going to make Rob's hairline clear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and anticipating this in the spirit which I believe it was intended, which was to uh, try and achieve a laudable goal in a new way and to look at innovation as part of that new way. I don't want to make a motion on this to refer or to what I would like to do is anticipating the, the development of a new relationship between council and staff, I would like to request that the city manager take this motion to the senior staff and have a conversation and respond to it at our next GPC. And that this would sit in whatever procedural thing that you needed to do. <laughs> Uh, in order to provide that opportunity. I, I do think that this is an issue of partnership and I would like to hear from the other parties. 
So, Mr. Woodland re, uh, advises that it be a motion to postpone consideration pending receipt of comments from staff. City manager, I mean, and if for some reason the earth falls down and we can't get it done in the next two weeks, then the city manager will come back in two weeks and say, I'm sorry, I couldn't get it done because of this reason. Okay. Motion to post, could someone put the motion to postpone on? Does it take precedent over the, where did Mr. Woodland go? Oh, there you go. Did, does it take precedent? Motion to postpone takes precedent over the motion on the floor. Someone needs to put it on the table. Motion to postpone and pending receipt of staff and information uh, to pending come back. Response from the city manager. Okay, there is that motion on the floor. Is there a discussion on these motions or not? Not or go like this? I couldn't tell. He's, he's, he's shaking his head. No. No discussion. Thank you. Motion to postpone. Uh, I just want to make sure. Because I think it's important to capture in the motion. So for me, the motion would be to postpone for two weeks to hear from the city manager after having had a consultation with the city On the motion. Okay. Clarification? Yes? A question of clarification. When, when a, a motion is postponed, and if, the, if that's voted in favour, is there the capacity for this council to lift that from the table in two weeks, should we so desire? Uh, as it, if some catastrophic or uncatastrophic thing happens and that can't be done, can we, this council, bring it back to our discussion in two weeks? Yes. And thank you. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Any opposed? Councillor Isaac is opposed. Thank you and carried. Council, I believe we have one item in camera to deal with. And then we will um, rise and report as appropriate. Uh, then we'll adjourn and go into open meeting workshop on governance. Councillor Isaac? Is there any way we could move the governance discussion forward since we have a member of the media here? I and that would also perhaps help us to address um, an issue that Director Woodland has been wanting to address for about six months. Totally agree. We have the director of Parks and Rec and everybody here to deal with that item, which is probably about 15 minutes. If you would like to have them hang out for another two hours while we deal with this, uh, I think that's not good use of staff time. So we would just basically ask the public to leave the room for 10 minutes and then come on back. Okay, even better, we'll leave the room. We'll leave the room, get it done with. Council, I need a motion to go in camera to deal with the outstanding litigation issue. Moved, all in favor, opposed, carried, thank you.